Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. So, the Rules Committee does a lot of good for the Magic community. And if you didn't know this, actually, the Rules Committee are the ones that actually handle the rules for Magic's most popular format, Commander. They handle the rules, bans and unbans, they handle format philosophy, etc., etc., etc. But especially now with what's going on in Magic, you know, with Wizards and Hasbro and all that jazz, <laughs> I think there is a rule that they are wrong on and that they absolutely need to change, especially now. So on this episode, I'm going to be talking about well, what exactly that rule is and why it needs to change. So yeah, if you haven't seen the Commander Rules Committee's website, make sure you check it out. I will, hopefully if I remember correctly to do so, I will link it in the description below. But yeah, we're going to be talking about where they kind of have some, I wouldn't say contradicting points, but points that don't exactly line up when it comes to their philosophy and the implementation of that philosophy. So here's uh, where the crux of this argument is, and the crux of the problem is, is they say, uh, you know, are silver slash gold border cards or physical proxies allowed in Commander? That was the, you know, the question that they are answering essentially with this. And their stance on it is, Magic is a collectible card game, and only official Magic, the gathering cards produced by Wizards of the Coast, should be used in games. Cards intended for play in normal games of Magic have black or white borders. Gold-bordered Collector's Edition cards and Mystery Booster-style playtest cards are intended for display purposes, not for use in games. Also, silver border cards, while sometimes using, are not intended for use in normal games of Magic, while occasional exceptions for this can be fun. When used regularly, they often make games less interesting for most players and are not allowed without prior approval. So, silver border, yeah, that part makes sense to, to many players out there in Commander and something that many agree on. And, you know, if you want to play silver border cards, you know, like I do with my rarity, you know, deck, I have rarity as a commander, just ask your playgroup first with that. But when it comes to the stance on gold border cards or physical proxies, it's a bit off the mark from what the vast majority of the community, you know, what the vast majority of the community actually, you know, stands for when it comes to commander. And it's an open format where, yeah, sure. I mean, if you can't afford certain cards or whatnot, or you want to just test out certain cards, yes, of course you can play with proxies. I personally have never run into one player that has not been okay with proxies, not one. And I know that there are players out there, yes. I mean, I personally think that you know your stance might be wrong and you might think that my stance is wrong but still it is important to have the uh, the stance actually you know solidified when it comes to the actual rules of the format and with this kind of a response um i'd say the rules committee you know, does try to kind of get around an exact answer on physical proxies because sure they say you know magic collectible card game only official magic gathering cards produced by wizards should be used in games they talk about the border and that's kind of problematic now because things have changed over the past couple of, well, I mean, past couple of years, but also the past couple of months when it comes to certain things. We'll talk about how this statement kind of also kind of contradicts a previous statement, not a previous statement, but a format philosophy. So when it comes to, you know, gold border, I mean, obviously those are pretty easy to identify. You have, you know, something, for example, you know, Guy's Cradle, very easily identifiable. I and many others out there are completely fine with gold border cards. In fact, you know, my Karn deck, my Karn is actually gold bordered itself. And again, have not run into one person that has been like, oh, that's gold border. You actually can't play with that. And uh, yeah, uh, um, obviously, you know, gold border cards, you know, are not tournament legal. That doesn't really matter when it comes to commander. Commander's not a tournament format. We'll talk about that here in a bit. But gold border cards are also much more affordable in many circumstances than their other versions. For example, cards on the reserve list, you know, Guy's Cradle. Um, you know, hopefully I'm showing up the image right now with the actual prices, but yeah, an actual, you know, Guy's Cradle from Urza Saga is going to cost you about $1,000. When it comes to the World Championship deck version, the gold-bordered version, it is only 200 So there is quite a price difference there. And again, I mean, you know, with that format philosophy, you know, or the, the, the ruling, essentially, you know, only official Magic Gathering cards produced by Wizards should be used in games. Okay, this is an official version. Okay, the border is different, though. We'll talk about, you know, the, the border difference, and we'll specify that. But then what happens when a product like Magic the Gathering 30th Anniversary Edition comes out? That kind of changes the game a little bit. 
And, I mean, it completely changes the game because Wizards themselves, I mean, the you know, head designer for Wizards, Mark Rosewater, had said multiple times throughout the years, as early, I believe, or as recent as last year in August, I think, maybe July, last year at some point, that, you know, that they're never reprinting reserve list cards, uh, you know, at the, you know, the regular Magic card size. That's never going to happen. That would be breaking the reserve list. And then, you know, lo and behold, um, there they are, you know, <laughs> Magic 30th Anniversary Edition. Pay $1,000, get 60 random cards. Yeah, reserve list cards are in there in Black Border. So yeah, Volcanic Island, as you can see, is one of those. Uh, and also, you know, again, cheaper than, you know, the actual version, you know. Actually, I don't even have the actual versions, you know, on here, you know, for the actual prices. But they're in the thousands of dollars. Uh, and uh, the 30th Anniversary Edition, at this point, apparently, is around 500 for the same card. Again, Black Border. That is, you know, again, if, you, if we, go, we go back to, you know, what the rules committee has to say about this, Magic is a collectible card game. Only official Magic that end cards produced by Wizards should be used in games. Okay, this is an official card. It is produced by them. Cards intended for uh, play in normal games have black or white borders. This has a black border. All of those cards have black borders. <laughs> Gold border collector's issue cards, you know, that this is now, a, is this different just because of the border? The border makes a difference? And for players that might not know that there's a different back on the card or whatever, how are you supposed to know if they're in sleeves? And really, again, does it matter? At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. It does not matter you know, if someone's playing with proxies, if someone's playing with gold border, if someone's playing with these 13th anniversary cards. Commander is a format that is designed for fun. It is not designed for tournament play. Uh, I mean, you know, when, when it comes to, you know, the actual legality of these cards, Mark Rosewater, you know, again, who said, you know, never do this. When they actually kind of introduced the product, Mark Rosewater said, they are not tournament legal. They have a different back. Okay, cool. Commander's not a tournament format. We, we are okay with different backs. That does not matter. We use sleeves. <laughs> the 30th anniversary is so exciting. Mark also said that. Good for you, Mark. No one else thought that. Anyways, I mean, when we go to the actual philosophy of Commander and kind of where there is this, again, kind of push and pull, apparently. just It just seems that way where... The, the rules committee says one thing where, you know, the very first thing that you see on their website, the philosophy of Commander. Commanders for fun. It's a socially interactive multiplayer magic gathering format full of wild interactions and epic plays specifically designed as an alternative to tournament magic. So we should not care what tournament rules are at all. In tournament rules, sure. Again, Mark Rosar said they're not tournament legal. They have a different back. These, you know, 30th anniversary editions. Cool, that's not tournament legal. The gold border versions are not tournament legal. That does not apply to Commander, which is a format that is for fun and not about tournaments. We do not care about tournaments. You can use whatever you want for cards. It does not matter. And the rules of the format should reflect that as well at the highest level. Uh, and also another you know, statement within that you know philosophy, just not even that much further down, each player is considerate of the experiences of everyone involved this promotes player interaction, inner game variants, a variety of play styles, and a positive communal atmosphere. I, I think, you know, when it comes to you know, summing that up, promotes, po promotes player interaction, a positive communal atmosphere. I mean, I don't think of anything, you know, more positive than be like, yeah, you can play with whatever cards you want. That's kind of the point of Commander, right? You shouldn't be saying, oh, oh, no, 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 no. That's a gold border card. Um, according to the Rules Committee's website, it does say that those are not for play in this format. Those are not allowed. Gold border cards not allowed. Oh, you, you proxied some cards, you just printed them out, you're playing with them, not allowed. No, 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 you need to play with official Magic the Gathering cards. I can pull up the website for you right now, the Rules Committee's website itself, and show you exactly where it says that. And I am right, therefore, because I am showing you what they are saying. They are in charge of the format, and they are saying, no, you cannot. So therefore, no, I will not play with you if you're using proxies. That is something, again, that is just not at all a positive experience, not at all what Commander is about, and not, well, you know, which, you know, the vast majority of Commander players don't play that way. The vast majority of Commander players could not care less what kinds of cards that you were playing with, and the Rules Committee's philosophy, again, in my opinion, contradicts that statement on proxies, essentially, and, uh, I mean, it needs to be fixed, in my opinion, because, again, there should not be any reason that someone can pull up and essentially say, no, you cannot play with your proxies. You cannot play with a gold border card. You cannot play with these 30th anniversary cards. You can't play with them because the rules committee specifically says on their website, no. I, and it's just, it's in me, in my opinion, it's just something that, you know what? 
it, it needs a stance, especially these days. It needs, you know, again, to reflect what the actual, you know, commander play base, the, the commander community, uh, their ideals are, what, what, what they care about, what they want this format to be and what they want this format to be. And again, it's for everyone. It is for everyone to play with whatever kinds of cards they want to play with. Play with your proxies. Play with, you know, your silver border cards, you know, once you get, you know, permission from your friends or your play group or your LGS. You know, play with your gold border cards because they're the exact same thing. Play with your, you know, 30th anniversary edition cards because Wizards already has kind of an open Pandora's box, rightly, and, and they're going to keep doing these kinds of things, I'm sure. Hopefully not, but I mean, they probably will. So, yeah, we'll probably see more, you know, like, oh, no, 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 no. The back's different, therefore it's different. You can't play with this card. So, yeah, I, I believe that this is a rule that the rules committee got wrong and they do need to update it. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to hear from you. So let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on this. Uh, I, I do believe a, an update is in order for this rule. So yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, have you run into anyone who is not okay with, you know, gold border cards or, you know, proxy cards? Let me know in the comments below. Are you, you know, not okay with them? And let me know why. So yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.